class was an idea that I've grown up with my whole life, being, right. you know, growing up in the 90s, and, uh, it, and it's the subject of humanitarian intervention. Right. So for myself, my first exposure to that word was in the con uh, was through uh, the Rwanda genocide. Right. You know, you've got this. I mean, we all know what happened, but essentially there was this uh, chorus from world leaders of "never again," that yeah. we have a moral responsibility to act when we see evil on that scale. Um, you know, military if it needs to be, and mm -hmm. I always that very with a lot of pride like yeah that sounds good like we're you know we we've, we've been blessed and we have a lot lot to offer and people halfway around the world are struggling why not help them out it's certainly a good thing to do and so i was doing a little bit of research into this and and listening to uh speeches and watching listening to oxford union debates and uh listening to susan rice give you know her her point of view and I, I sort of dawned on me that I'm approaching this from a very academic, very theoretical point of view, because this isn't my life. There's no humanitarian intervention in downtown Toronto. So I'm, I'm very much separated from that reality. Yeah. But for you, it's very close to home. It is a lived experience. And so I just want to, just from your point of view, want to know what human what is your definition of humanitarian intervention is it just something you discuss in a university lecture hall or is it something that's a realistic uh solution on the ground so you tell me yes i think um well i think from from the un's perspective right humanitarian intervention is sort of it's it's seen as uh, countries with member states of the UN intervening when there's a was in the, there's a member country that's either creating atrocities um, where of of either minorities uh, or mass atrocities mass killings either by that member state or within that member state's uh, borders uh, without that member state being able to protect their own people um, or again like I said them doing act the actual killing which is kind of what happened within the Rwandan genocide. Uh, you could even go on to like Kosovo and, and Bosnia, uh, et cetera, and pick up numerous examples of that sort. So I think from that definition, I think we can absolutely say that it is necessary. From someone who lived in Congo, went through a war, I can say humanitarian intervention sometimes is extremely necessary when there is people being killed without anyone being able to protect them. I think it it is necessary and as we, as we've seen throughout world history whether it is you know the, the killing of, of of jewish people the mass killing of jewish people right to can go again rwanda another example that, that we, we've picked up on these are all i think examples of just how you know sadly the world is not as as a rosy as we would like to think it is and sometimes it requires uh, the intervention of people when there's no other alternative. Um, so I would say for me, that's 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 to me in my in my mind and in my own world world experience, I would say humanitarian intervention comes down to that to that really to that definition specifically. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What I, do you think? For, yeah. No. I I would definitely hold that. Uh, I think we all agree. And for my for myself. Uh, a, a very crystal clear, sort of hard to argue example is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Yazidi population in, yes. uh, in, the, in Iraq, uh, mm -hmm. Kurdish, that, that yes. kind of thing. Yes. And so just for, for, I'll give a very brief rundown for those who don't know what I'm referring to. The Yazidis are an ethnic minority in Iraq. When ISIS came to power uh, 2013, 2014, there was a lot of discrimination specifically towards them because they're non-Muslim. And um, there, there was, I believe, there's a specific, if I'm not mistaken, uh, where I'll, I'll have to look it up later, where there essentially a lot of Yazidi people were uh, pigeonholed or uh, bottlenecked into this particular region. And ISIS was on the move to commit atrocities against these people. These atrocities have been well documented. So this isn't a matter of I heard it from some guy or you know the US military told me so, like this is a proven fact. Um, and as a result, 
President Obama ordered airstrikes against the advancing ISIS position. He ordered an airlift of the people who were fleeing humanity, the, who were fleeing the, uh, the carnage, um, coordinated with the governments of Turkey and others to settle refugees and really put a, a full-throated effort into helping out those people. And uh, I think that's, that's something we, I would imagine 90% of people, if you were to tell them that story, you know, unarmed civilians being attacked by ISIS, US military has all this might, should it, you know, of course we can say that this is a positive thing. So for me, when I think of humanitarian intervention in a literal sense, mm -hmm. that's a example, sort of wrap your mind around what exactly we're talking. 